Hello, I'm David Hilster. I am a critical thinker, a dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something your university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. I love it. NASA is doing and openly doing dissident science. Why? Because they're actually doing experiments with the EM drive. The EM drive is a drive that supposedly uses microwaves or electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic drive to move things. And of course they say that's not possible, but the, theoretic, the theoretical physicists are, physicists are having to say, uh-oh, this may be for real. But we're not, not, not important. What's more important is that, hey, dissident science is alive and well, and even NASA is doing it. Well, if you want to learn more about what an EM drive is, it's really a radio frequency resonance cavity thruster. And basically the way it works, if you look at this diagram, you have a magnetron, the same thing that's in your microwave oven, shoves ra uh, radi or radiation or microwaves into a hollow frustum. Somebody had to make that up. This is, uh... Anyways, uh, this is Sawyer, who uh, founded this a satellite propulsion uh Research limited. Anyways, microwaves go inside, bounce around, you get more force on one side and less force on another, and guess what? You get a thrust, which is really, it's really strange, isn't it? It goes forward. Uh, yeah, well, thrust, yep. Whatever it is, it's supposed to go forward. And of course, EM Drives has its own webpage, emdrive.com. Go ahead, take a look at it, read it for yourself. And, um, of course, uh, we will continue with our article because why NASA is actually involved in it. And you can see that Roger Sawyer is the British engineer. Of course, he's an electrical engineer, which is not very, how do you say, uh, surprising to me because electrical engineers are real engineers. They believe in facts, physicality even though they deal with electricity that's like supposedly holes moving backwards in a wire. <laughs> My dad's an electrical engineer, but we have, a, we have a different model, and other people have different models for it that are actually physical. And so if you look, China's also doing it. And in the uh, later, they're saying, well, is this really, you know, they're going to question it, but the uh, really the big news here politically is this. The publication of NASA's paper silenced some objections to the EM drive research based on the lack of peer-reviewed publication in top scientific journals. Maybe our organization should move to NASA, but they probably would get pretty upset with some of the stuff because um, they're open, but not that open. And of course, why is this all a big problem? Well, you can read it right here. In this article, the law of conservation of momentum says there's no way electromagnetic waves bouncing inside a box can push a box forward because, you know, it should just bounce around. It should just... But it's not... Of course, it's way more complicated. If you have a model of the universe, you can explain what's going on. But they don't have one, so they can't explain what's going on. But again, they're doing dissident work. The reason this is so interesting is because they're looking for a way to move us through space. That's what NASA is about. They don't care what the theory is. They don't care about theory at all. They care about, can we make it? Can we do it? Can we measure its force? Can it, is it effective? Is it efficient? That's what they're looking at. So they're going to try everything. They don't care. Hopefully they'll come along with something that's going to wipe out mainstream science in general, all that mumbo jumbo, quantum, quantum mechanics and all that. It's out there. Maybe they'll just have to turn to us and find out for some of us from these answers. But of course, this they uh, talk about the Today's re reaction-powered spacecraft, that's what they call a propellant uh, spacecraft, the one that uh, propellant exhaust carries momentum away and generates thrust. That's the, 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 the uh, rockets we see now. If we can do an EM drive, we can go a lot farther, a lot faster. Here's where it gets really interesting. The theoretical scientists are trying to understand why and how the EMP uh, uh, propulsion works right there. The NASA paper suggests a tentative explanation based on quantum quantum physics theory, a non-local hidden variable theory, or pilot wave theory for short. If you look up pilot wave theory, it is, here it is. It's uh, in the early 1920s, de, uh, de Broglie, and um, now known as the de Broglie-Bohm theory. It's, uh, they talk about Max, uh, Max Bohm, uh, de Broglie, Wolfgang Pauli. They, the Ralph Newman then later comes and says, no, this isn't real. I'm not going to get into it right now. It gets to be a little hairy because it's, um, they can say it's one, it's a modern version of the, uh, uh, that's the hidden variable theory, modern version of this theory, which remains a non 
mainstream attempt to interpret quantum mechanics as a deterministic theory. We too try to do that. We say that this is deterministic. There's no spooky anything at any distance. Nothing. That's one of our, it's our model. But uh, again, this is all model like that. The point is, is you don't need to understand all of this stuff. The point is, is that NASA writes a paper and says it suggests that it's based on a pilot wave theory, which is outside the mainstream and deemed impossible by von Neumann. Of course, he invented the, the, the first com real viable computer and then von Neumann is like Einstein. He is God. You cannot question him. So we go on and on here, and we it, it talks about what we just saw there. I give you, I'll have all these links in, of course, down below. And this is one of those things: a non-local spooky action at a distance, which puzzle Einstein still needs to be invoked to explain dynamics of pilot wave theory. However, the M drive does not seem to be very quantum, which is good. It's more; it should have a classical explanation based on Maxwell Maxwell equation without. Lorenz and without all those things, but there are Maxwell. It, it, it's a mess, and they, of course, I don't know. Do they call Einstein classical well, again? It gets to be a mess. Is it a mess if you have a, have a model? No, it's not. Is our model one model? It's only one. It's not arrogance, folks. One I know. There's also the ether model. There's also the lattice model. So having models, you can actually start describing and talking about these things. Here's another interesting thing that we that I saw as a person who has their own model. Woodward devised a method to use that mass fluctuations for no, our novel uh, propulsion scheme. That's mass fluctuations. Fluctuations mass. Push the mass when it's heavy and pull it back when it's lighter. No, there's no such thing. No, what happens is we don't have a model for the gravitational field. And when you do, you can explain this. And the answer is not that the mass is getting heavier and lighter. The answer is the field around it is changing. Much like they would say there are gravity waves. But of course, gravity waves into their model don't make sense because they don't have a model. Blah, 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 blah. And of course, we talk about other types of um, effect gravitational cis drive was funded by NASA, blah, 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 uh, technically credible, advanced, that could one day change the possible of space. So they're looking at alternatives that go fly in the face because the explanations for those defy theory. Now, of course, they're going to try to come up with it, okay? But um, anyways, other scientists, now this is where it happens, other scientists disagree and the jury is still out of whether the EM dry is ultimately BS. I'm paraphrasing the word that's right there. You can see it. And exotic propulsion needs more accurate tests in the lab. This is the same thing that happened to cold fusion until, of course, 2009 when the 60 Minutes said cold fusion is hot again since the best measuring person out to a lab in Israel and they measure the uh, effects of what they're saying that is coming from cold fusion because the rest of, of all of science says, oh, 90% of us know that they can't measure. The measurement guy, the top one from the guys who don't believe it was sent over there and he comes back, uh, uh, they're measuring something. Uh, uh, there you go. Same, same argument coming down, same argument coming down. But it's interesting to wrap this up is to see the conclusion. It's very interesting because you've got sort of a double-edged sword here for dissonance. In fact, here I'm reading, many independent scientists participated in the Estes Park workshop. Independent scientists, which are dissident science. Maybe we should call ourselves that. Maybe I need to call myself independent science. Eh, nah, dissident makes, we're tough guys, you know? Come on, come on, give me your best shot. I will tell you why your mainstream argument is no good. Oh, a thousand billion experiments prove it right? Uh, nothing proven. It can support it. It only takes one that makes it wrong. And guess what? I will have a better model. I went. Come on, come on. We're tough. Dissonance. Independent. Of course, some of the critics take advantage of the DIY nature of some of the experiments to deny scientific value of the research. The DI nature of some experiments to deny the scientific goals. What's that? Do your own experimentation. Yeah, you're not uh, uh, outside the university. But in 1905, a young independent amateur scientist, stealing time from his patent day job, wrote three papers that changed the course of physics. His name is da -da -da -dun -da -dun, Albert 
Einstein, little underdog, becomes a great scientist who happens to be wrong. <clears throat> nice idea. It, it's so impactful, the idea of Einstein coming from nothing outside and changing all of physics and laughing and have the crazy hair. That's way more powerful than truth, which is Einstein's wrong. Anyways, I thought this was a great article. I loved it. Dissident science being done at NASA. Hey, Dr. Dowdy, you're not the only one that says, hey, I see different things that the scientists say that are supposed to be all you theoreticians that sit there and talk about yourselves and give yourself Nobel Prizes and divide it up like you divide charge up into little pieces. You give yourself the Nobel Prize in little pieces because you want to hang that on your mom. So you can be important. It's not important that you're right or wrong. <laughs> David, that doesn't mean anything. Anyways, don't take my word for it. Don't take my word on faith or anybody else's word. Please read it for yourself. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm David D. Hills. I'm your science therapist. Hoping that you this is helping you become a th critical thinker. So when you read these articles, you can start seeing the same craziness. But sometimes a gem and somebody doing some real dissident science. Ciao for now.